Ryan from the Science Center. You might remember from er an earlier episode where we did an experiment. If you have any questions about the Science Center or for Ryan, put them in the comments below. Uh, if, uh, what has it been like since the closing of the Science Center? Um, well, it's been, it's been very, um, you know, interesting. We've been trying to, we've been doing a lot of experiments uh, in trying to create new content so that people can still sort of feel like they're um, uh, able to have those science center experiences. So we've been doing a lot of uh, videos online and we have some online workshops that we're doing and uh, just kind of trying new things and trying to get all of the people that are really missing the science center now that it's closed, uh, trying to give them a way to still sort of enjoy it and explore science. How is it, how's the schedule of movies, of the movies for the IMAX being affected? Affected. Yeah, so temporarily, uh, the IMAX is shut down right now. It just wouldn't be possible to, uh, to have, um, <clears throat> to just to have people coming into the theater at this, at this point. So, um, yeah, so there's no movie showing at all. Some of the films though, uh, we've, we've had, uh, so America's Musical Journey was an IMAX movie that we showed a couple of years ago and it's actually available for free on uh, YouTube now. And so we've shared some of those links so that people can still get some of that, those great stories. Will you, will the Science Center lose any movies because of this? Yeah, probably not. Um, <clears throat> we uh, the last film that we opened uh, just in February was Into Nature's Wild, and uh, so we've that contract will just be extended. And um, you know, most movie theaters and most of the um, sort of like film companies, they're not releasing anything new to theaters right now, um, anyway. So uh, it shouldn't. Uh, really affect in terms of content, um, at least for now. So we'll have to see how this how this goes for the long term and and uh, look at it again in a few months, perhaps or a month or whenever we reopen again. Did you grow a beard? I did. Okay. Uh, what, are, what are some of the new things you've learned by going online? <clears throat> um, yeah, we've had. Uh, I think most of the people that are on our team have been having a lot of fun learning a lot of new things. So um, our outreach team, for example, um, they, ha we, they have a go code program that they do. So they would go to different schools and libraries um, and individual classrooms and sort of teach some introductory coding things in person. Um, well, now they're doing those workshops online. So via Zoom. So you can sign up for free and take the class online. And so one of the things that they're learning is um, just how to teach uh, coding when you can't actually see the person that you're um, talking to, or instead in not just one person, but you know, sometimes 30 or 40 people, they're all, all taking that course at the same time. Can we get like information for the class to share? Yeah, absolutely. We can, we can definitely share those, uh, those links. Um, just about anything that we, that we do talk about today, if you go to the Science Center website, which is sasksciencecenter.com, um, we also have, uh, there's a button now on our homepage that says Real Science, Real Fun Online. And that's where we're posting everything, including links to the GoCode stuff, uh, to the GoCode programs and all of our online videos. And then we're also doing some um, like downloadable activities or sort of, I guess, blog posts um, where there's, science activities or crafts that you can do at home. We hear you you are doing an online auction. That's right. So when the Science Center closed, um, actually on March 14th was the, the first day that we didn't open. Um, that day was supposed to be our big annual fundraiser, which is called Fantasy Food. And uh, one of the things that we do at Fantasy Food is we have a bunch of uh, auction items the people that attend the event can can bid on and help to raise raise money for the science center because we're we're actually not um, a government organization we're a, a local nonprofit and so those types of fundraising activities are really important to us and one of the things that we did with those auction items is we uh, used a site called um, 32 auctions 
And uh, we posted all of those auction items now online. So I think we're posting six items and then they're kind of running for two weeks and people can bid on them online. And then um, every second Thursday, we're adding new items. Well, you didn't auction a date with us, did you? Uh, I didn't, but that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, what are some of the other events besides your fundraisers that were canceled because of COVID-19? Um, you know, in terms of like specific events, um, the Science Center is always pretty busy with, with events. So um, we have obviously the, the IMAX theater had to temporarily close down. Um, so we, you know, we, we couldn't do just regular movie admissions, but also the special films that we do sometimes, um, after dark movies or that type of thing. Um, and then of course, with the science center being close to the public, um, you know, our, like we usually have day camps, um, in April. So we had to cancel those. Um, obviously people just can't visit, uh, the science center anymore. So any of those, um, May activities in our makerspace and all of our stage shows, just all of those things also had to be uh, suspended. Uh, has work been harder for the Science Center since it closed? I think what's happening is that um, a lot of people are really having to learn some new skills. So um, uh, even though, you know, most people use like Facebook or Instagram for themselves, um, it's very different to use it professionally and, and um, even just learning how to update websites and, and things like that. Um, so all of our team that's used to doing one thing, now they're all sort of adding new skills to their repertoires and they're um, learning, learning a lot of new things about um, sort of the digital age that we all live in, which is, is pretty exciting. So I don't know if it's harder, but it is very different for us. The, the biggest thing that's different is that we don't have, um, you know, visitors to interact with. So um, we, we have to wait for them to comment on our videos or comment on our blog posts before we can answer back or send us an email. Um, whereas one of the things that was always so much fun about working at the Science Center is that interaction where there's like, you know, a few hundred people on the floor and they come up to you and ask you questions and, um, they want, to, they want to ask you why things are the way that they are. Have you reached out to the other science centers to hear what they are doing while being closed? Yeah, so there's there's a few different sort of um, organizations that we're a member of. Um, in Canada, all of the science centers belong to a group called the Canadian Association of Science Centers, um, or CASC. So uh, we have uh, sort of weekly meetings with them and we all talk about what we're doing and share what's working and what's not working. And then we're also looking for ways to um, partner together so that people can have a, a, a broader Science Center experience. Uh, and in fact, I think that we are going to be able to announce something uh, in just a couple of days that all of the Science Centers in Canada are gonna do um, all at the same time. Uh, but I can't, even, I can't do much more than tease that right now because I don't have uh, all of the details yet, but stay tuned and uh, I think we're going to have a really fun thing going on this weekend. Is your owl more active than you ever thought he was? Whose idea was it um, to give him a webcam? Yeah, so a few years ago, um, we worked with Waskana Center and we had a webcam on a Cooper's Hawk nest in Regina and while they were nesting and you could you could tune in, watch the eggs hatch, uh, and then as they, as the hawks fed their young. Um, and so Bubo is one of the most popular um, sort of attractions at the Science Center. People love coming and watching Bubo. And uh, we realized that we had this camera um, in, our, in our workshop and that we weren't using it. And then we thought that would be a really great thing uh, to do, that people would be really interested in that. And uh, they have been. It's been. It's been great. People are really are just tuning in and uh, and watching Bubo. Bubo is really active, especially at night, and um, a lot of times it's pretty quiet during the day. When most of the time, when our visitors are there, um, most of us that work there have have seen that because we've been there, you know, in evenings, and we know we know how active the owl is at night. So it's really cool that people now at home. 
um, can sort of browse through and see just how much Bubo actually moves around and how uh, Bubo moves around too. Because a lot of people may not know, but the reason that we have Bubo is uh, Bubo was a rescue. He only has one wing. And uh, so he can't fly um, around the cage uh, or around the enclosure. He just, he kind of hops. And uh, so it's interesting to be able to see that and, and watch that from your computer or on your phone. Um, did you learn any hobbies that, that you're doing because of COVID-19? Have I learned any hobbies because of COVID-19? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. No, I haven't really. Although I've been spending a lot more time um, uh, in Adobe Premiere. So I'm sure you guys know about Premiere, Premiere Pro, yep. because you guys make all your YouTube videos. So um, one of the things that I do is I make the like the IMAX, the pre-roll before the IMAX movies. And we use Premiere Pro for that. But now that we're doing all of our um, like science at home videos and the SSCTV videos, we're spending a lot more time in that. and. Uh, so, and now some other people are at work are learning to use that as well, which is pretty exciting. Uh, did you comb your hair for this? I did, but you know what it is, is I, I need a haircut and uh, my barber, I can't, I can't go see them anymore. So I need to, I don't know, maybe I just need to shave it off. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about <laughs> hair. And seriously, Mine is I mess. don't care about my hair really. My hair is straight. Literally. All I do is I just forget about it for a couple of months, and then my mom's like, "Hey, come into the bedroom to I mean bathroom so I can comb your hair." And I'm like, "All right, I have hair." Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> I, it's so long. I hate it. If you if you have any questions about the science center or for Ryan, put them in the comments. What keeps you be busy during? At, oh wait, uh, are you tired of washing your hands? My hands are really dry. I'm not tired of washing them, but they definitely are dry. You have to make sure that you're using lots of lotion because they're they get all cracked up and and dry from being from washing them all the time. But uh, but no, I'm not really tired of washing them. How about you guys? Uh, I'm not that tired. Of I'm not. I didn't. I don't really go out, so I just I never really wash my hands because we don't go out that much. I just, I just, no, I just don't wash my hands. It's weird. It's bad. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. It's just. It's I bad. Kind of, I kind of just forget about my hands, too. I just forget about everything. I'm. I do a lot of things with my hands. I'm just like, at the end, washing my hands. I just neglect. <laughs> honestly, I just neglect <laughs> having. Even having hands. And your body? Like, kind of. You neglect. Oh my god. I mean, like. I don't even wash my hands. I don't. I don't know how it works. A scientist might know, but I don't. Uh. Uh. Our dad says the Adobe Suite is really well resourced. It is, and you can watch lots of uh, lots of tutorial videos as well, which is actually one of the cool things about uh, about YouTube, right? You can learn to do almost anything uh, when you watch just by watching different videos of other people that teach it. Is there anything else we should know about the Science Center or can tell viewers about services during this brand new, brave new age? Well, one of the things that we haven't talked about yet is our gift shop. So the Adam and Geek Science Shop um, is also closed to the public. But what we did was uh, we decided to make as many things as possible available online. So uh, we've been... Uh, creating items that you can purchase through our online store at the Science Center. And uh, we're actually offering next day delivery uh, in Regina. So next business day delivery. So if you buy something on Sunday, we'll drop it off on your step for you uh, on Monday. And uh, same, you know, Monday, if you buy it on Monday, we'll get it on Tuesday, that type of thing. And then we we're not at this moment, we're not offering that delivery on the weekend, but I think we're going to be doing that pretty soon. And um, we're also adding a lot of a lot more information about those items. So um, some of the things that we have are, for example, um, if, if they're just a science kit, if you want to sit down, you know, with your family and, and 
kind of do an experiment or, or build a kit to build something that we have in our store, then that's a great way to do that. And then some of the smaller items, if you're just looking for some toys, like we have uh, some skipping ropes and um, other sort of outdoor activity things that, that we always sell around this time of the year for people that would usually play within the, in Moscana Park. And now you can add those things to your cart as well and we'll deliver them to you um, at home. And uh, then you can still play with stuff in, in your yard or any you know nearby park as long as you're social distancing and uh, green space, I guess is the word I should use. Uh, wait, um, actually I have one of the exhibits at my house. I can shoot pucks because there's a hockey exhibit, exhibit there. That's right. Because on Mondays, there are, the video is called Science at Home. So it's science experiments that you can do with things that you probably have in your kitchen. So um, we've done like color changing milk. And today we're going to, I'm going to post a video um, a little bit later on this afternoon where you can use uh, the the power of uh, hot and cold water to crush a can, a pop, an empty pop can, so. So for my class, I actually did an experiment because my favorite color is purple. So we put mixed hot water, put hot water, boil the kettle, put that in like a mate. It was supposed to be like a wide jar. So we used mason jars and I put it. So okay. Put, so the hot water, I use food coloring and dyed that water red and then cold water I dyed that blue and then if you so you're supposed to put this one there put an index card here and put carefully put the cup there and then you pull it out that was like the riskiest part the card was ruined but it mixed purple it was really cool literally it had did it work for you the way that you thought it was going to it was bad. I thought it was going to fail horribly. But my mom was very careful. <laughs> but the only ba downside was that there was like this very, very, very big hole. And there was a lot of paper inside. Yeah, in the index card. It was like it this. Was like, it was like some sort of big <laughs> thing made a hole through it. It was a square and it had a hole. And it was like. Uh, yeah. Okay. Enough about <laughs> that. Um. What has been the best response about the online experiments? Um, well, the um, one of the things that we do that's really fun is uh, part of the Wednesday video is we actually take questions from people. So we ask you to record a, record a question on your phone and send it to us. And then Sally Science will answer that question. So we've been having a lot of fun with that. We're getting a lot of uh, really great questions from people that are watching and it's a lot of fun to to find a way to answer those questions with a, a a fun way and with a demonstration um so that's probably the most fun um but the other thing that's been really interesting is these the our go code classes that we've been doing because the response to them has been great we have we have one happening tomorrow and it's already filled up we don't have any more room for people so um so that's pretty exciting that that people are doing that Sally Science. So one of our uh, employees uh, has a, a great background in uh, sort of improv and drama. And so she created a character for the show called Sally Science. And Sally is just really fun and uh, very colorful and, and um, lively. And she answers science questions for people. So. Ooh, cool. Uh, yeah. So here's a question. My mom would be really glad to hear. So in the IMAX, in, at, like in Christmas time, will Doom be coming? The movie. Well, that's a good part question. Of this, um, part of my experience so our IMAX doing theater this is uses learning. film, an IMAX 15, 70 millimeter film. So we have the movie has to be released in that format before we can show it. So. Just because something says that it's going to come out in IMAX format doesn't necessarily mean that we're able to show it because some theaters have uh, a digital projector. So instead of like an IMAX movie that we get on film, they weigh about 600 pounds and they're about six feet across and they're all rolled up. 
Um, but when you have a movie that's released digitally, you just get a, a hard drive, basically, and you just plug that in. So um, a lot more films are released in digital format than on IMAX film format, which is what, what we use. So, so almost always, if, the, if a movie is released on IMAX 15, 70 millimeter film, um, we will show it. But um, we may not always get to show it the exact day that it comes out. So um, that's called a day and date release. If, it, if they say like coming on Friday, the May 14th or whatever, sometimes we need to wait. A couple sometimes we need to wait a couple of weeks before we can show it. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Is your family tired of you being homeless? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we're, we're doing pretty good, but... Um, I have two kids, and my wife is home as well. So we are, we're all, we are busy um, like stacking things into desks. So this desk behind me here is actually an old door that's sitting on a bookshelf, <laughs> and uh, we've been making little places so that everyone's got a a spot at home to work, so they can get some quiet time to do their homework from school, or so that I can do my work, or my wife can do her work. Okay. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for letting us into your home. I nabbed your phone. Oh, you thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>